Sim racing on console. In this video, I'm gonna let you know your options when it comes to wheels and pedals. I've got equipment from four different manufacturers, Dustmaster, Logitech, Fanatec, and Moser. Some of this equipment I've bought with my own money. Some of it I've won in competitions. Some of it was given to me for reviews. But in this video, I'm gonna give my honest opinions on what's best for you in different budgets. What are the pros of everything? What are the cons? Everything here has pros and cons. So let's get into it and let me start with some fundamentals. So if you want a system that works on PlayStation and Xbox, you can only go for Fanatec. So I've got here the CSL Elite DD, the CSL, uh, sorry, I've got here the CSL Elite, the CSL DD is basically the same. This is a PlayStation licensed wheelbase. And then when you pair it with an Xbox rim, this now works on PC, PlayStation, Xbox. You cannot get that with anyone else. This Logitech wheel works on Xbox. This Logitech wheel works on PlayStation. This Thrustmaster wheel works on PlayStation. And this Moser wheel that a lot of people don't know about works on Xbox. So they're one or the other. So Fanatec have got that cornered at the moment. But let's start from the bottom and work our way up. So if you're starting at the bottom and now you're there, I recommend choosing between something like a Thrustmaster T150 or a Logitech G923. This is not something I bought. I won it in a sim racing competition in the Logitech McLaren G Challenge, and I haven't used it yet, but I've used plenty of G923s and G29s at events and expos. Very solid wheels, very underrated, actually. I think a lot of people look down on it, but Logitech could produce these for like centuries. They just know what they're doing really robust. I've been surprised by the quality of the pedals. I always am when I go to an expo. They're not as bad as you think. They're much better than the standard pedals that come with the Thrustmaster T150. So interesting to see the difference between these pedals and the T3PA Pro pedals. And I think you can get a bundle with Thrustmaster where you get the T150 Pro bundle and it comes with these. I recommend it. These are loads better than the default Thrustmaster pedals, which I don't even have anymore because they broke. So metal pedals are really, really, really good. Now, the difference between these two, now bear in mind, you can get this variant that works on PlayStation. You can get a T150 that works on Xbox as well. That might be the Ferrari brand one, I can't remember. You can see here how much of the rubber has come off my Thrustmaster T150. I use this wheel heavily. I've used it on Gran Turismo. I've used it on iRacing. I've used it on ACC. I've raced at the very highest level with this wheel. I've been setting, you know, lap record times at Daytona in my splits. I've been racing in top split in Gran Turismo Sport. It's a good wheel, but it feels a little bit like a toy. This one also overheated a lot. So I'm reluctant to recommend the Thrustmaster, although I've used it a lot more than the Logitech. But just bear in mind, you can be really fast on it. Have a look at my videos but this one did overheat. The default pedal's not very good, but if you're gonna get this brand new with a T3PA Pro set from a retailer like Amazon or whatever retailer in your country, media market, micro center, and have your warranty, pretty good setup. Logitech, you can do the same, get it from a retailer, get it from Logitech. I actually have a discount code generally on this channel for Logitech, so you can save 10% if you use the code Kirith, I think, at checkout logi.gg forward slash kirith, but worth researching both of these, just bear in mind, wouldn't get the default pedals with the T150. Now, an interesting alternative is, and I don't see anyone talking about this, not sure why, this is, this is an Xbox compatible direct drive system from Moser. Absolutely incredible. Let me take the uh, wheelbase off. So this is it, the Moser R3. It has three Newton meters of torque, which is not a lot. Um, but if you're gonna give this as a gift to someone who has an Xbox, maybe, you know, a nephew or a niece or something, this thing, I just love the concept of it. I love having a direct drive wheelbase that's so small. And the quality of the Moser wheelbase, for me, better than the T150, possibly better than the G923. So definitely worth considering this. Moser aren't doing a lot of promotion of it. I'm not sure why. I'm not paid to promote it, but I just think it's a cool wheelbase. 
and you've got on the back lots of different options for pedal, dash, um, handbrake, emergency stop and shifter as well. There's your DC input for the power and USB to your Xbox also works on PC as well. So worth looking into that on Moza. Is an Xbox compatible wheelbase? If this works like the Fanatec ones, then this might make your Moza wheelbases something like the R9 here or the R16 or R21 might make it Xbox compatible. I don't know. I've never tried it. Let me know in the comments if you want me to try it. But I thought I would mention that. Okay, so that's a really cheap way into console. Well, really relatively cheap way into console direct drive sim racing. Then you have Fanatec. So here I've got CSL Elite belt driven. That's actually more powerful <laughs> than that little direct drive. But you also now have the CSL DD and the controversial CSL DD Plus. Now, I can't do this video without saying that Fanatec's customer service and delivery time seem to have gone in the bin. Wasn't like that when I bought this. So I bought this Fanatec equipment with my own money. Great purchasing experience. Yeah, I had to pay um, customs duty, but I think I got a VAT refund. Quality, really good. Like this wheel, used it heavily, heavily, heavily. Again, racing in top split with this McLaren wheel. About 200 euros, dollars, pounds. And honestly, one of the best wheels you can get. Yes, it's got an old school release system, but to be honest, you can use this wheel racing pretty much everything. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. But there we go, that's a Fantech system. But at the moment, it seems to be that if you place an order with Fanatec, you might not get it. And if I'm understanding it correctly, I need to do more research, let me in the comments. But it seems that the CSL DD Plus, so sort of the um, replacement for this thing right here, hasn't actually been approved by Sony, even though Fanatec have been selling it. So Fanatec have been taking people's money for it and not sending it out because they're not allowed to by Sony and it might not get approved. Massive drama there, so. <laughs> Um, big deal. You can get a lot of rims, by the way. This is the big uh, thing I should explain. Moza, Fanatec, and Thrustmaster, but not this one here, let you change rims. Logitech does not have a rim ecosystem. So if you get, th these are the two rims you can get basically with Logitech. G Pro, G923. Thrustmaster T150 does not allow you to change the rim, but if you get a T300 or a T500, or the TGT too, I think. You can change rims and get like the uh, Ferrari rim and stuff like that, which is very cool. But Logitech doesn't have that rim ecosystem. I'm not sure why. Logitech, I mean, I literally create content for the Logitech McLaren G Challenge. So why they haven't come out with a McLaren wheel, I don't know, but anyway, I will ask them. So just wanted to let you know about that. So these Moser wheels here, I think at the moment you cannot use these on console, which is a shame because this is an incredible wheelbase. I mean, just look at it, it has a literal screen in it. This is an incredible wheelbase from Moza, but, and I wanna be honest here, and this was gifted to me, the quick release has started to become loose. So I need to take this apart and work out why that quick release is wobbling. Now that's very controversial because a lot of people say that the Moza quick release system is better than the Fanatec quick release system, which I generally agree with, but why is it wobbling? I've been using this Fanatec one for, I used it really heavily for, it must be like almost two years, and that there's no wobble in it because it's not a quick release system. So you can't use those ones until Moza, if they come out with a PlayStation licensed wheelbase, then it's gonna be good to go open season and you'll be able to use that. Now Logitech G Pro, this is the wheelbase. You can see it just here on the right hand side. That is the wheelbase that I use day in, day out to play Gran Turismo and also my PC Sims up here as well. This was gifted to me by Logitech when I was creating content for them in ACC, but I have no requirement to use it or keep it or show it, but I use it because for me, it's the best one. So this is more powerful than anything else you see here in terms of Newton meters, because it's an 11 Newton meter wheelbase. And the only downside I would say is that there's only one rim type but it's a very good rim. And a bit like the Fantec McLaren for me, it just is really solid, hasn't put a wheel, a, um, so hasn't put a foot wrong. So that's a lot of stuff. Let's recap at the moment. You've got at the low end, cheaper end, Thrustmaster, Logitech. 
If you're on Xbox, there's a third option of the Moser R3. Definitely look into it. Do some research on that one because that's a bit of a alternative way in and you get direct drive. And don't be put off by people say, oh, it's only three Newton meters because if you're racing on Xbox and or it's just your kids doing it and they want a bit of fun, you don't, you don't want them to have a massive, be powerful wheelbase, trust me. So look into that one as well. Then you've got Fanatec who used to be the undisputed king of console sim racing, but their reputation seems to have gone downhill. My experience has been good, really good fun using this. I don't really like this wheel for two reasons. I don't like the Alcantara and the shifters are just like so bad, don't understand it. And then for me, the best wheel, this is my recommendation, bearing in mind that this was gifted to me, but having used all of these, this is my favorite wheel, hands down. The true force adds an extra element of immersion, a bit like I have Fanatec V3 pedals, which are not here, because they're on my other rig. They have a really nice rumble feature that actually, to me, adds something. The true force does add something for me. So that's my recommendation, but I wanted to set up pros and cons. The con here, by the way, is that you can't use it on Xbox. So either this is a PlayStation one, either you get the PlayStation one or the Xbox one. I would love it if Logitech sold the rim separately so you could just swap out your rim depending on what platform you wanted to be on. But any questions, let me know in the comments. In the description, there might be affiliate links or discount codes for you if you decide to buy anything. But definitely do your research. And if, and if it's a lot of money for you, as it is a lot of money for me when I buy this equipment, make sure you're buying from a place that you are comfortable with. For me, that often means Amazon or going to a retail. I bought this one from, I think, Argos in the UK. Literally went, bought a box, walked home, attached it to my desk. And if it went wrong, I'd just go back to Argos in the UK, which is now Sainsbury's, with the box and say, can I have my money back? So please, 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 a lot of money. Make sure you do your research, but hopefully this is helpful to see. More videos around here of reviews of stuff that I've done more in depth. Hope you found it helpful. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time.